welcome to numerical ship and offshore hydrodynamics. Today we have the lecture 34. Uh, today we are going to discuss the how we can solve numerically the IRF based solution. Okay? And uh, this is the keyword that you have to use to get this lecture. Okay? So, without further delay let us start the uh, main part. Well, now, uh, if you remember in, in my previous classes, we have discussed, uh, okay, let me always first let me write this equation of motion which is uh, m plus a infinity into x double dash plus uh, 0 to infinity b tau x dot t minus tau d tau plus c x is equal to f of exciting force. Okay. Now, uh, in, in this equation, uh, we have discussed how we can get this uh, exciting force, we have discussed how we can get this c, we can we discussed that I mean how, how we can get this b tau and also the added mass infinity. So, now we know that uh, this this parameter that is required even before we start our writing the main code. right? So, here we can further modify this equation because this limit is not infinity. right? This limit it, it should be in some finite value and we know that finite value is tau n. right? So, therefore, we can rewrite this equation as m plus a infinity into x double dash plus 0 to in some you know uh, some tau n into b tau into x dot t minus tau d tau plus c into x equal to f of exciting thing. So, now uh, how we can do that right. Now, uh, today we are going to uh, one by one, uh, now we have this uh, whole thing with us together. Now, today actually uh, step by step we try to build up the flow chart and then we need to see that what the there is not much critical thing anyway here, uh, because this uh, the most complex this added mass damping term we are getting from this. Uh, frequency domain solver, uh, but here uh, still we, we have some kind of numerical instability is possible here also. Uh, so that we have already discussed in, the, in my previous class that how to deal with the, at least for the exciting force. Okay. Now, let us see uh, how, how we can build up the flow chart. Now, here if you look at this equation, we have three part. The first part is something is required even if we first start the, the time domain computation. right? So, what the thing is required initially or you can take that is my input. Of course, my input uh, would be the, the mass and then my input would be that what would be my simulation time. So, you can call it T or you can say it's a uh, simulation time. And of course, uh, we need to give, you can give as an input because uh, here we really do not need the shift geometry as such. So, you can use this input this c the coefficient c i j let us say that also you can use as an input. And what more uh, there would be input here, uh, okay, let us let us go with this if, if something more is required then we can add here. Second thing is something that we need to uh, compute before uh, the equation we solve the equation of motion compute before uh, that uh, solving the equation of motion solving the equation of motion. That means, before we start the time marching algorithm. 
uh, okay, of course, okay. Now I remember this. Is a, of course, you this B i j in in frequency domain that is our input. Then a i j uh, in the frequency domain that is our input, and then f of omega, of course, that exciting force. That is our input, and also the phase. Uh, that is our. So these all are my inputs, right? It can be more. Let let us see at at this point as I remember all these things. Okay. Now what you need to compute before this uh, this this we start the equation of motion is uh, we need to have uh, we need to compute first the beta, right? And then uh, after this we need to compute my a infinity, and then we need to uh, find out my f of exciting force and which is this prescribed simulating time t. So, all this data is required. Now, here in this equation of motion there then everything is that uh, which I required before even we start it is here. And then we need to uh, the idea of this I mean this code uh, why we are writing because we need to find out if I gave uh, some wave of frequency omega. So, what I need is what would be my uh, the corresponding my response that x. So, this is actually uh, it is the the main input that it is going to give I mean by the user that at which omega I try to find out the response of the vessel. So, definitely this is something that we want from the user apart from this this definitely these are the input to run the code, but once this is ready. So, the, the biggest input is that at which frequency I am going to find out my response of the vessel right. Now, uh, the question is uh, there are major question is uh, so a omega is given to me right and then to run run this this equation motion let us say I am running for the the time step t. So, I give t equal to uh, some 200 second. So, I said that I need to run the code for 200 second. Now, uh, the question arises here that what would be the delta t that means that how i do the increment right because with this respect to this i need to find out uh, the n that the parameter because that is important to uh, run our software is it not i need because the computer coding you have to give some i equal to some 1 to the total stress so, n should be uh, so Therefore, I need to compute my n dot delta t that should be my 200 seconds. So, from there I, I need to calculate that what would be my n fine we understand. So, what what I am trying to say is this is given to uh, me that at which frequency I am going to uh, do the evaluation or maybe at which you know time p or which time period t p. Okay, I need to find out my uh, response of the vessel. Okay. Now, here at which time step I need to calculate it. Okay. So, here we, we, we know that uh, we, we give that that upper 200 second I am going to give it. Then how I set my delta t because you know you can take random uh, let us say delta t equal to something from 0 0.001 you can make a fixed value of delta t. Right. So, then you can see that your n would be very large in fact okay, and then it might take some not necessarily. Okay. Normally, the way we represent the delta t uh, actually at least the way I do that in our coding. So, I make sure that how many cycle I required. For example, I need let us say in 200 uh, second or, or let us say the the time period is uh, you know uh, like that after 200 second then I need let us say uh, I need uh, some 1, 2, 3 uh, some 4 cycle 
I need uh, so with this I need some kind of the force force cycle I need. Okay. So, normally normally what I do in our code I really do not give the second what I give is that what would be actually directly I am asking the n. Okay. Now, suppose uh, the, the user gives me this it is 200. So, then I, I need to decide that I need to fix my delta t to make sure that uh, I must have 1, 2, 3, 4 peak uh, when actually I have n equal to 200. So, what I what I did normally that this is my uh, the time period right. So, I fix my delta t I divided this time period by number of some integer. So, that this gives approximately uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 that number of cycle that I need. Okay. So, so that means, I need to divide my time period in that way. So, that when it comes around 200, I can get uh, roughly uh, the 4 cycle. Let us in that case, if I fix my delta t equal to uh, time period, uh, let us say divided by 40 then when actually n become 200 actually I can get you know 5 cycle. So, I make sure that. So, in my case the delta t is not a fixed time point 0 0 1. It is based on the fact that that how many cycle I need. So, maybe I need some 10. So, I have a control on this. So, here what is happening now what I am going to do with this code finally, I need to get the RAO. What is the RAO? RAO is nothing but uh, it is the x versus you know omega, right? Or in some way x versus the time period T p. So then I give uh, that let us say list of omega. So I am giving some omega one, omega two, and so many uh, omega n, and I try to calculate what is the corresponding response which is x 1, x 2 and then x n and then I need to plot this graph. Right? Now, thing is that uh, here when I plot this graph, so I need to give this code so many value of omega and in now here if I make it is delta t equal to 0 0.001 and if I fix not the second, if I fix the number of time step n is my input, then you can see that that then this become really really small because if I take 200 and it is 0 0.001, so roughly uh, you know you don't get much. Uh, let us even if I take 2000, still it is or I make sure even 20000. So you, you, you see. Uh, it is very difficult even if you make it 0 0.1 let us say uh, to be precise it is fairly large ok of course. Then also even if you make some 2000 then only you can get uh, at least for this you have 200 time step I mean uh, 200 seconds something like this. But then if your time now you can see if the now your time period uh, something around uh, 10 second sometimes 20 second, sometimes 30 is not 30 is very high, uh, maybe some 15 second intermediate. Now, when you do that, then this number of cycle this one will change, right. But what normally that what I want in my code what irrespective of your omega or irrespective of time period, I should get the same number of cycle with the stipulated time or you make 200 or 400, if I make 400 I can get 8 cycle. So, that I make sure, so in that way I fix my delta t equal to that the time period divided by the factor and that will give me the desired cycle that I want, sometime it is 4 or 5 whatever. Okay. So, now I know that how do I fix my uh, delta t. So, so here 
uh, the thing is that after getting all this input I fix my delta t is equal to time period by some some integer uh, whatever the integer uh, m or you can say some k. So, that I can get my desired cycle which is 5 or 6 or 8 whatever. Okay. <coughs> so, this is how uh, normally uh, we do and also we need to make sure this with this delta t at least you can get the uh, result little bit uh, you know convergent it, it should not be very large. Okay. So, then we might not get very good result. So, that also we need to make sure, but all this comes with the ex experience when you uh, work this IRF code for 2, 3, 4 I mean many times then you have you have get some idea how you can fix your delta t. Okay. So, now, uh, so now uh, once I fix the delta t, so then when you compute this b tau which is again the list of uh, here you have the tau and if the value of b tau. So, we are using the same delta t uh, it is easy to use it you can you can use different, but normally we do not we do not use this uh, different delta t or use the same delta t and you can get this corresponding b tau right fine and then you know that a infinity is a constant term. So, you do not have to bother much about this. So, now uh, here I do very important thing how to fix the delta t and then uh, with respect to that delta t only we can get the uh, value for beta. So, now if I write this code the flow chart this flow chart is uh, now I just write again plus uh, 0 to now it is a sum n into beta x dot t minus tau d tau plus c x equal to f. So, when I writing this so, now uh, we how I set the, the flow chart. So, now I just start this code and then initially we need to get the, the data which is m the mass then uh, the added mass uh, damping then f then this one and then your uh, c i j all these things we need to uh, get from your input right and then i need a input about at which omega we need to uh, calculate the response and then at till which actually i give the which number of time step i need right so uh, not t normally what i get this nt that what is that the total number of time step we need to give and also I give I ask another input that what about the delta t that means that how many I mean that that time period I need to split in how many uh, parts. Okay. So, it is basically the m. So, so this is the th three thing that uh, we are going to ask okay. and then after having this we can compute this b tau and a infinity ok and ok. So, yeah then then I am done and al al also this f of t right. So, these three things actually I can I can get once I have uh, so this is the initial part of the code right and then then we start the time marching algorithm right so now uh, here okay so always i just write this equation in top so that you can understand that what actually i am doing b tau x dot t minus tau d tau plus c x equal to f so, let me okay, I make it f of t. So, now my 
the time marching algorithm now we need to start right. So, how I do that? First we need to calculate this I need to arrange this way m into x double dot is equal to f of t minus 0 to tau n v tau x dot t minus tau into d tau minus c into x and minus a infinity into x double dot. So, then we need to compute initially my we can call this total force f of t t which is nothing but my exciting time right. So, now actually I start the my code let us say from t equal to uh, 0 okay. and then I need to calculate the whole thing. So, f of t minus 0 to tau n into v tau into x dot t minus tau into d tau minus c into x. Now, I just write t minus a infinity into x double dot. Now, here I need again uh, that I missed here that initialization of the uh, whole thing. So, here we need to initialize also that the next step that at t equal to 0 you have x dot equal to 0 x equal to 0 these two things is enough okay. and you can you do not need actually however you can make the acceleration also 0 at t equal to 0 uh, this also you need to define before we start the time marching algorithm. Okay. So, now here I have this thing. So, at t equal to 0 you understand that this will gives me no continuous it, it should be 0 and this should be 0 and this should be 0. Now, here I need to do once a small modification that uh, actually we really do not compute x double dot uh, why because uh, actually since it is under the linearity. So, if you assume let us say x equal to uh, some cos of omega t and then definitely you can get x double dot equal to minus omega square into cos of omega t. So, you can assume that x double dot equal to actually minus omega square into x. So, that that I that I understand right. So, I use this property I use this property and then what I do is I rewrite this again this total force t equal to f of t minus 0 to gamma into b tau into x dot t minus tau d tau minus c into x t plus omega square into a infinity into x. So, this modification I do. Now, here you see here I mean you do not you already calculated this it is with you. You know what is your c. So, you do not have to worry about this you have calculated this this part also beforehand. Now, only the one thing that actually uh, you you have to dynamically each time if you need to calculate is this term. Uh, this is already you have already stored it in your uh, memory uh, computer memory this is this is your geometric property and that is your input. So, you know that this also you have computed before we start the time matching algorithm at uh, t equal to 0. The only thing you did not do before this one. So, this actually you need to calculate dynamically. So, then actually if I if I write a MATLAB code, so probably I can write at this moment f t equal to f of t minus I can call some function right dynamic function. 
So, let us take uh, that b tau let, let us take this uh, the function. So, this function will take the value of return some some real number of course, but it will it will the input should be b tau and then the velocity the list of the velocity and then it, it takes the present time step t and the past time step tau this should be the function then minus c into x of t plus omega square into a infinity into x. So, this is the thing. So, only thing that we need to call the function at each time step. Now, uh, how I how I do that? So, now it is so trivial that you can do that. Now, suppose uh, here this is basically the integration from a 0 to uh, some tau that means the tau n that is already pre calculated and it is uh, b tau into x dot t minus tau into d tau that is you need to do. Now, it is actually you can simply use uh, some trapezoidal. Okay. So, when I show you the code that time I we can go there. So, it is very easy. Uh, so, so, you have this the graph which is the, the b tau and then the velocity this is the term and so therefore, at each time step now, this you can write in the summation form. So, i is equal to 1 now you see it is some m. Uh, so, in the time step m and then it is your b i and then it is x dot now it is the present time step is uh, and you said this i tends for the the tau. So, now in this if you look at before here we are we are giving you uh, the present time. See, in fact, this tau is not record in fact. So, it is good enough to send the present time step because here you need to calculate this present time step let us say j. So, it is j minus i right and then it is uh, the time interval it is uh, delta t i. So, this is so this is gives you the value of your beta. Right. So, I know that how do I calculate this is so trivial like a trapezoidal will do. So, we are using normally the trapezoidal rule to do that right fine. So, now <coughs> let me again finally rearrange everything. So, at t equal to 0 first we calculate the the total time step f t i let us say uh, it is that means that that means let us say i equal to 0 or i equal to 1 if you are using the C code or uh, MATLAB code if C it is start i starts with 0 if the MATLAB i starts with 1 anything. So, f t i is nothing but your a phi if I write in in very uh, in in computational way it is it should be a phi minus then you can call this function b tau which is the function of your uh, you need to pass the value the list b tau then you need to pass this present time step i and then you need to pass the list of the velocity which is x dot that means all the velocity that is required right because to do the integration in trapezoidal and then minus it is c into x of i and then plus omega square a infinity into x of i. So, this is your total. So, then in the next time step you have to solve um, this equation m into x double dot equal to your total for safety right. And this actually we can do very easily that that Euler integration scheme if you remember we have solved in your in, in the first you know in the first lectures actually we, we solve this equation right. So, I know very well that you have to do this v t plus delta t v is nothing but your x dot t plus delta t is nothing but your uh, integration of f t 
divided by m into delta t right plus v of uh, t. This is how we can do this and once I get this. So, then I have do that x t plus delta t equal to integration of v t plus delta t into delta t plus x of t and then I increase my t equal to t plus delta t and again I give back here. Right. So, this is how actually we write the code. Okay. So, now I think after all this discussion probably now here you people can write this code uh, neatly because I discussed each aspect of this code uh, what is the what the problem we can face how to overcome this problem and how to write this time marching algorithm which is really easy. Once you have all this other thing, then time marching algorithm is really easy. And then after doing all this exchange, you should be able to get the uh, equation of motion. Uh, of course, uh, there is lot of simplification uh, is involved over here, but at the end mostly uh, we can get very realistic result out of it. Okay, so, today uh, with this uh, let us finish this discussion on uh, uh, equation motion using impulse response function. Remember that uh, this code is written for 0 speed, uh, for the forward speed you have some additional term uh, that we are not discussing over here, but if you are interested always uh, we are happy to help you how to include the forward speed dependent term in this IRF based code. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much.